Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I am so happy to have you here. We are going to dive right into your reading today. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Um, these are general readings, so take what resonates and leave the rest. For Pisces, for Pisces, please spirit. <laughs> Whoa, Pisces. Okay, you have beauty on the bottom of the deck. And you're getting the card Burning Hero and Yin Yang Lover. And I noticed immediately there's this is a three and this is an eight. And that makes 11. And that's a very important number. Um, a master number. Uh, so that may be significant. The Burning Hero card represents something that we've been talking about now for quite some time. It's the transformational, you know, fires that represent life's tests. And this is you emerging from that or your person. Uh, you know, please keep in mind, you know, always heed your own intuition when you're listening to tarot card readings. Like if you know this is not your own energy, then Maybe it is your person. If, you know, if it doesn't fit at all, it doesn't fit, you know? Um, but this is an energy of, it's almost like rising from, the phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, it, it's also kind of talking about the juxtaposition of, you know, um, kind of the heavy pressure turning the coal into the diamond or um, the, the, the forces external to us that may seem harsh or intense or unbridled or uncontrollable or you know any of those things but without without that kind of energy and, and you know we all really try to avoid that energy or most of us do um but without that energy change can still take place but typically it's much slower and it's a much sort of dis different process you know um we're only here for such a short time and we have so much to accomplish it feels like in every lifetime um but this card really represents that out of the efforts and the energy that you've been putting toward healing, expanding growth, you know, um, allowing yourself to look for the gift in the fire, you know, um, sweet success, you know, is inevitable. It, it is taking over, you know, um, everything is always in a state of flux, you know, you can't stay in that situation without experiencing the other side of it right the yin yang lover card is talking about you know how sometimes we're just so magnetically drawn to something that we can't control it we can't prevent it we can't stop it um this is talking about how sometimes we are drawn to things that take us away from our goal even when we try to resist it even when we try to use our conscious free thinking mind to say no you know i'm not going in that direction that's not the right way it it sometimes happens and this card is talking about how Either way, it's progress. Whether you are moving towards your goal or you're moving away from it, it is progress. It is, it is learning. It is expanding. It is exploring. It is you staying true to that kind of magnetic pull. Um, the beauty card on the bottom of the deck is talking about
it's kind of a celebration of divine feminine energy and our intuitive, creative, abundant self and that we are really all of us, whether we're masculine or feminine, vessels for this divine energy. And it is kind of a reference to, you know, our beauty comes from within. It's innate to us. Um, I just looked out my office window and um, I, I have been in my office for some time and just now I just noticed that right out my window there is a yellow flower blooming and it has, I have no idea how it got there, it must have been planted by the birds. I have no idea how it grew because it's underneath a bunch of bushes. Um, it certainly wasn't intentional, but it has sprung up. And it's just, sometimes when something like that happens, it just, it reminds you of the divine intelligence and the innate beauty of everything, including us, you know, um, whether it's part of the plan, you know, our own plan, you know, sir, I have a garden on the other side of the bushes from my office. Like it's my window and then a hedge row and you can see the hedges through my office window because my office windows go almost to the floor. And then there's this, and then I have my intentionally planted flower bed and some ground cover in front of it. But this flower, it looks like a little yellow daisy type flower. I'm not sure even what kind of flower it is, but um, it feels just like a wild free flower, you know, growing out there. And um, it reminds you of the beauty that is just possible anywhere and everywhere. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about self-worth lately. And we've been talking a lot about um, looking for the abundance in our life, focusing on the abundance in our life, releasing scarcity mindsets. And, you know, it's things like this little flower that pop up in life that always kind of make me pause and make me think about, you know, the beautiful kind of chaos of it all. But even within that, this flower is so divinely made. It is so inherently beautiful. I mean, who doesn't smile when they look at a flower, you know? Um, it's, it's remarkable to me that it could even grow there because the, there are thick hibiscus bushes. It, it's just growing up in between two hibiscus bushes. I mean, it must have found some kind of little inch of sunlight. Um, but it's insisting on shining. It's not asking itself, am I in the right place? Am I doing a good job? Am I worthy of blooming? Am I worthy of my life? Am I worthy of this experience? It, it just is. It just does. And that is free of the mind and put, the mind putting those ideas in our head that maybe we're not worthy or maybe... I don't know. I'm going to let you sit with that. I'm just going to leave that there, but I feel like all of that's kind of happening in this moment for a reason, especially with this beauty card coming up. And the flower is literally this color in the Burning Hero card. Um, and I don't know if that's why I noticed it. Actually, now as I'm sitting up in my chair, it's covered by the window pane, which is probably why I didn't notice it. I had to lean back in the chair, which I do when I'm reading um, tarot to see it. For Pisces, honey, no, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Honey Beckett. Oh my gosh, as I'm calling the dog, we have loyalty with a picture of a little, cute, adorable black dog, just like honey.
All right, you have, wow, whoa. Oh my God, you guys. I literally just looked down and look at this. You have masculine and feminine energy and harmony. And you have this energy of heart fog. You know, for some of you, this may be a budding relationship where it's like we're trying to figure it out or like where we're not sure. For some of you, it can be a situation where it's like we thought we were heading in one direction, but there seems to be some kind of confusion. You know, um, with this heart fog card, we... Um, <laughs> We have a tendency to, you know, when we are guarding our heart, when we are afraid of suffering, when we have experienced, when we've put ourselves out there emotionally, or we have experienced suffering because we have cared or because we have had emotion for something, we tend to get sort of resource protective, you know, of our heart and we block it. And when we do that, it shows up, it comes out in so many ways. It comes out in our communication um, or our lack thereof, right? And a lot of a relationship is communication, right? Is kind of being able to say, this is what I need. This is how I feel. This is, you know, what I'm, you know, going through right now. This is um, what could really help this is this is what you're doing that that feels like this to me um, You know or this is how it feels to me when this happens, you know um, When we get kind of I don't know I keep saying resource protective and that's the only thing that's coming to my mind when we get resource protective of our heart it's much harder for us to say those things. We can get really overwhelmed, you know, um, because we have, we have actually intentionally put a blockage between our mind and our heart because we don't want to think about our suffering. We don't want to be reminded of that suffering. And we have put up this blockage to protect us, protect us from thinking about it, from reliving it, from re-experiencing it, and from opening up to receive more suffering, right? Um, so there's this energy that I'm getting from this heart fog of, um, this, uh, tower or whatever that's in here. It, it, it feels like the end of one of the three swords of the heart space to me. And these balloons feel like communication or like me trying to put out there how I'm feeling or what my thoughts are. And it's almost like, you know, I'm just trying to avoid this, this, this touchy subject here, or this touchy space here, um, that I'm that would pop the balloon or would prevent me from being able to express myself or being able to, you know, kind of continue down this path. But it is almost like we play games with ourselves or we trick ourselves. We um, and this could be your person, Pisces, or this could be both of you, where it's very difficult because we have both. We everybody comes to the table with some baggage, right? In this day and age, in uh, in probably in every day and age, it's just that I can't speak to those because I wasn't there. I'm here now, and I've met plenty of people who have experienced a lot of suffering in their life. And so, when you get two people that are coming together and they're trying to connect on a deep, intimate level, um, it, it's sure to touch some places that, or yeah, it's it really, it's sure to touch some places that have been hurt before, that are a little sensitive, that are a little raw, that are, you know, um, especially too, because we're also always in a rush and we really don't, for the most part, live very mindful lives. You know, our mind is always on like, what am I cooking for dinner? Do I have clean clothes for tomorrow? Do I need to go do my laundry? Do I need to drop something off the dry cleaner? Do I need to pick up groceries on my way home? Where is this person? Where is that person? Are they get Are they going to get to soccer practice? Do they have a ride home from school? Da -da 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 -da. Blah, 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 blah. I got to walk the dog. I got to hurry up. This traffic is terrible. Da -da -da. That's where our mind is, like to, most of the time. We're not sitting in a place of solitude. Um, in lotus position with hands to heart center, you know, reaching our crown up to the ethers and, you know, extending our roots into Mother Earth 
grounding, centering, and getting in touch with our higher self 12 hours a day. You know, we're, we're just not, and, and you don't have to, you know, um, but we're not doing the healing work and we're not taking the time to say, you know, why is it that I keep experiencing this over and over again? I mean, we have to get hurt time after time after time till we finally say, no, no more. I'm not going to do this anymore before we'll say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to do something different. And that's how this feels. It just, it feels like I, I'm trying to connect. I desire to connect, but I also have this energy of, um, of having been hurt before and wanting really hard to avoid getting hurt again. And that is the threat to the harmony that could come between us you know, or, um, that could bring us together. And so when you're dealing with two people who are hurt and also a lot of times in our, in our upbringing, we, we don't have good communication modeled to us. Um, you know, rarely on TV do we, I guess there are some shows that are very, you know, mindful of that and that are putting it out there. I don't watch TV, so I can't, speak to that but I would hope that there are however you know I know that um a, a lot of people really struggle with communication and a lot of people struggle with you know being able to access their emotions to even express them you know in order for me to say you know when you may not have meant this or you, you know, this may not have been intentional, but when you knew that I was like cooking dinner and you came home 45 minutes late and then you were on the phone and you stayed on the phone and then you changed your clothes and then you did this and then you did that. And I was sitting there trying to keep dinner warm so that, you know, we could have a nice dinner and eat it together. Um, it really made me feel unseen, uncared for, and unheard, and unappreciated. And, you know, I just feel like I have to express that because I don't, you know, I don't want it to fester or build into anything else. And I just wanted to make you aware of it because I don't think you would intentionally have me feel that way. We don't learn to, to talk like that. We don't learn to even get in touch with how it is it's making us feel. You know, we wait till the person maybe gets off the phone and then we attack. You know, it, it, a lot of people yell, a lot of people, you know, blame. A lot of people are like, I was in the right, you were in the wrong, blah, 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 blah. You know, um, it, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating and it's really hard and it can be easily overwhelming. And, you know, if we have a hard time saying things like that, Imagine when it gets to the deeper stuff. Imagine when, you know, um, we're trying to process bigger things as a team together. Um, it's hard to stay on the same page. I noticed that just like as a married person, you know, almost all of my married friends are divorced. I think I have like, I think my husband and I have like two couple friends that are still married um and like I just could not ever believe it like we would be out to dinner and people would be sitting there talking and they the one spouse had no idea things about the other spouse that like I knew you know what I mean because I had talked to the spouse like they had no communication they were not talking to each other you know um and the kids would you know the kids were my kids friends and they would use that to get different things from different parents and I mean it was crazy you know where it was like if you said anything to my husband my husband would always know what you were talking about because I I tell him everything I mean I don't think there's anything that I don't tell him and he tells me everything like we talk all the time we talk all day long every single day like I can't even imagine it so um it, that's what this feels like. It feels like we're 
not able to either express our emotions or we're not really communicating here. Um, or there's, you know, either I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. I don't know how to put it into words or it's, you know, I don't even know what I'm feeling because I'm not disconnected. And, you know, all I know is that I don't like this and it's your fault, you know? And then, you know, where do we go from there? What progress can be made from that? None, you know, um, or very little. And so, you know, we have to be able to, with the, the guitar here, it just, it feels like communication. Music is like communication. I don't know, in my day and age when we were dating, we would make playlists, we would make cassette tapes for our people, you know, and it would say everything that we kind of like wanted to say but didn't you know, or couldn't, or, you know, was more, was so awkward that it was easier to say or more comfortable to say through a mixtape, you know, I still have some of my mixtapes, but, um, it just feels like that, uh, to me. And on the bottom of the deck, we have loyalty and we have trust and we have reliability. Well, when you foster a, a place, when you're, a, when you, when you are able to communicate, when you're able to be in touch with your feelings, when you're able to say, you know, this is how I feel, this is how it's affecting me, you're able to make progress. You're able to to really build that trust. You're able to build that reliability. It's like, you know, with my husband, I don't even have to tell him how I feel. He knows. He knows me so well. If I want to talk about it, if I want to tell him how I feel, if I want to just get it out and vent, he's there for it. But for the most part, he's just like, come here, babe. You know what I mean? And and that's, I mean, priceless. It is. And if that's what we're working toward and that's what we want, it does require doing the deep dive to figure out, one, how am I feeling? And, and a really good tool for that is journaling. Um, I forget, I think it might be George Bernard Shaw, but somebody said, I write to find out how I feel. So you, you're getting, I know I screwed things up and I honestly have no idea how to fix it on the bottom of the deck. You feel like home to me. And I know you're right, but I need to come to my own conclusions. So, yeah. you know, I feel like this is a situation where it's like this feminine and this masculine do want to come into harmony. And what they're really looking for is the same thing with this loyalty, dedication, trust, and reliability. Um, but it feels like this energy, this like, protecting the sword, the protecting the wound, the having the wound, the, you know, um, the blockage created by not wanting to experience further wounding. Those kind of things seem to be creeping in and seem to be disrupting the harmony. It's hard to have harmony when you have to avoid this area, you know, um, and, but it feels like it's trying, it's trying, it's trying, but wow, we have to really avoid this here. So let's dive in with the tarot guys. We're using this awesome deck. One of the makers of this deck is on threads and on Instagram. Um, her moniker is the tarot lady. If you like this deck and you're interested in following her and you like tarot, um, I don't think she has a YouTube, but I don't know. Bhakti. All right. Everything's in reverse here. And the only card we have upright is kind of in reverse naturally, the hangman. So we have the two of coins and the nine of coins in reverse and the nine of wands in reverse. So we have these two nines and nines are an energy of completion, right? So there is, and a two is a decision. And so we are, there's an energy here. Hmm. 
where I feel like what is important is letting our, our guard down, letting our pride, letting our, our, I can do this on my own. If what we really want to be is in a partnership, you know, I, I'm, I'm always a huge fan of the, I can do this on my own and I have everything I need within myself and you do. And that's true. And, and you know, <laughs> there's nothing else that really needs to be said about that. But when we want to be in partnership, with another person or we want to collaborate with another person we have to find healthy ways to maintain our sense of self and our own sovereignty but let the other person in and with the two of coins being here and being in reverse this is talking about letting go of making decisions out of fear and making decisions from an imbalanced place and what is keeping us in balance? That sword in our heart. That's the only thing. You see how beautiful everything else is? Everything is working in concert with each other except that needle there. That 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 sword tip, you know, feeling thing. Um, with the hanged one, this may be that you're in separation and you're looking back on what happened and you're kind of realizing, ah, somebody had their guard up and somebody was really strongly holding on to this energy of you know i don't need anything i don't need anyone i can do it on my own and like i don't want to get hurt and you know um if i let you in you'll probably hurt me and i'm making you know the choice that i made to go into separation was probably made from an imbalanced place and out of fear out of a need to protect myself from further suffering with the hang one, there's this energy of, I'm able to see it clearly now. I'm able to see it from another perspective. You know, I'm able to see that if I come in, if I, if I'm in a relationship or I'm trying to connect with someone and I'm saying all of the time, well, I could just walk away from this right now. How, what effect does that have on the relationship? And does that foster a, you know, place of unity and harmony and coming together kind of energy? So let me further clarify these cards. And what is the source of that? Is it my need to protect myself? Is it all those times I got hurt? All those times I got disappointed? And, you know, because if I've held on to this desire, if I still want to connect and I still want someone I can trust and I can rely on, then I have to let them in. I have to let the guard down. Someone is definitely seeing something clearly that they, it's like they were not seeing it before. And I honestly feel like it is something having to do with communication. In this particular Five of Wands, when have you ever seen another Five of Wands card where there are band-aids over someone's mouth? This is something that was either said or it's, it can even be the energy of, you know, how we really feel and what we're really thinking comes out through our communication, whether we intend for it to or not, whether we're saying it directly or not. If I'm maintaining my sense of independence and I have my guard up and someone is trying to get to know me or someone's trying to get to know me on a deeper level, they're going to know that I have a guard up and they're going to know that it's, you know, I'm a tough nut to crack, you know, I'm I'm one of those people that knows they can do it on their own, doesn't need anybody, and, and you know, is, is not going to necessarily just open up to letting someone in. And I don't have to just come out directly and say that. It's in, every, it's in all my actions, and it's in everything that I say. Uh, you know how we say like, and I'm sure you guys have known this and have experienced this, but like if someone has a real big insecurity, people have a tendency when they're insecure to try to cover it up and the more they cover it up the more obvious it becomes you know it's like if you have a pimple on your face and it's kind of small or whatever but you're like man it's I, I just don't like the way it looks and you put a band-aid over it it's like wow that's like obvious from across a football field where you know I wouldn't have seen it unless I was like right up on you and studying your face 
if you hadn't done that. It's the same kind of thing. Um, and with this, with the death card in reverse and the five of wands, there, it feels like there is a desire for this not to be over. The nines are in reverse. So it's like, I don't want this relationship to end, but I need this cycle to end. And, it, and the death card is that energy of transformation that we saw in the burning hero card, where it's like these things from outside, the five of wands are typically external influences. These are, they could be things that have happened to us in the past, past experiences. They could, the five of wands can also represent a blockage that we have within. Um, but it, it, it like comes out. Um, and there is this energy though, that I feel, especially with the sun of, I want to be happy. Uh, the five of wands is a minor arcana. I want this to be just a bump in the road. I want this just to be a blip in the road. I don't want this to be forever. I don't want this to be permanent. Um, and with the sun card here, there is this energy of, you know, healing of clarity of being able to really see something for what it is but there's also this energy of really not having the words or the tools or the ability to know what to say to really fix it and that could be coming from you know that emotional blockage yeah so the nine of wands in reverse has the ten of swords clarifying it with the three of wands on the bottom of the deck. So this is an energy of where I feel someone has experienced some difficulty in their life and they've had a lot of trouble releasing it. They've had a lot of trouble letting it go. Um, it, it, and when we don't let go of things, when we don't heal from things, and especially like with the 10, this is something that's taken place over time, most likely. And, um, you know, it, it's something from really and truly, usually it's the past and it's the way that it has affected the way that we think and the way that we see things. You see how she has that fire reflected in her glasses? It's because this person, the way they're thinking is always, okay, well, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to be fine. I'll just, you know, I'm fine on my own. I don't need anybody. I'm fine. And that is what's reflected with this nine of wands of this barrier of, you know, um, I don't open up. I don't let people in or only to a certain extent, only to a certain degree, even though what I truly desire and the desire I haven't given up on is having someone that I can trust that's reliable. Um, but the way I'm viewing things and the way I'm thinking about things due to some past cycle is what is keeping me from being able to do that. With the three of wands on the bottom of the deck, there is an energy of kind of like, someday it'll be different. You know, someday I'll be able to do it. If I find the right situation, the right time, you know, when my ship comes in, if, you know, I meet the perfect person that doesn't trigger me in any way, which is absolutely impossible, um, then I'll be able to overcome this. Um, or I'll be able to, you know, experience what it is that I want my happiness. It's, it is also in a way feeling like your happiness is outside yourself and I'll be happy when, you know, I'll let this go. I'll let this cycle complete when it will automatically go when my ship comes in, when this thing happens. So the chariot was coming out sideways and the seven of wands is in reverse and the five of coins is upright. So there's an energy trying to change so that we can have success and victory. It's almost like even for some of you, the acknowledgement that I found the right person, but we just can't seem to make it work. We just can't seem to get all the parts in gear and get some traction and move. <laughs> And, but I, I found the one, um, with the seven of wands in reverse, you know, that <sighs> there's an energy of, this can also be an energy of letting your guard down, but I feel like it's 
it's kind of like the question of do I have the fight? Do I have it in me to to battle that five of wands energy, that barrier that is either built within me, probably both built within me and coming from an external source? Do I have the strength within myself to take it on? Um, because this is what is potentially keeping that chariot from being able to move forward. With the five of wand, oh, the five of coins, all of this is coming from some sort of scarcity mindset. Some some definite space of fear, or of I don't really believe that things will be okay. Wow, this is tough, man. Um, you have the Emperor upright with the Seven of Pentacles upright clarifying the chariot. This energy right here should, and you know I hate the word should. Um, it's not kind to shit on people and don't shit on yourself either because you got to be kind to yourself. There's this energy of, man, with energy like this, everything should seemingly work out. You know, um, the Seven of Pentacles is kind of that energy of it takes time for things to come together. Um, but with an emperor, it's like, but I am strongly choosing this and I'm choosing what's in the highest and best of this connection. And I'm, I'm in my power and I don't have the scarcity mindset and I've let it go. You know, all energies are a spectrum, right? And so kind of the shadow side of the Seven of Pentacles is like, you know, I'll just wait and let fate take its course. And, you know, maybe eventually it'll work out. You know, maybe eventually someone will step into their power. You know, because while the emperor is divine masculine feminine, divine masculine energy on the one side of the extreme, it's distorted masculine energy on the other. And that's very, like, controlling. That's very, you know, easily to anger or to take action without necessarily really waiting to see what happens. It can be operating off a lot of assumption instead of facts. Um, it can be, you know, kind of hot tempered. Um, and with the seven of wands in reverse and the star card in reverse, it, it's like, it, it's, it's a lack of hope. And it's a lack, of, it's, it's kind of what I'm actually getting from this is, it's a feeling of, I don't actually think I can heal from what's wrong with me or what has happened to me. And, and if you're the one feeling this way or you recognize this in your partner, there are two schools of thought. One is that our circumstances are set in stone and there's nothing we can do to change it. And this has come up several times this week. Um, and the other is that things are always changing and that the entire universe and everything in it is fluid. Nothing, it, it stays the same from moment to moment. Um, and therefore, what, what has gotten me, what, what my past is, doesn't dictate my present and my future if I'm in the fluid mind state. If I'm in the set in stone mind state, there's no hope. I can't overcome it. And it feels like you have someone grappling with this or you have someone with that core belief. And as long as they have that core belief, that's keeping that emperor energy stuck on the shadowy side of what's possible there with that energy. And so you're going to see those types of reactions and actions. It can be very fiery. You know, it can be very passionate, very quick to anger, very quick to trigger. Um, and, you know, especially with that knight of wands, it can also be someone who's very in and out. It's like, I'm, I, they, they keep coming back and they keep being in it because this is what they really do want. And then they keep bolting from it because at the same time, this is what they really believe. This is what they believe is possible. Only what they've already experienced. Why? Because the five of pentacles. Scarcity mindset.
Wow. You have the emperor and the empress, like, just falling on top of each other. You know, the... The Empress is just like the Emperor, right? The Empress is a spectrum of energy. And in the Divine Feminine Light, you know, she is limitless. She is the ultimate creator and the ultimate expression of creativity and birth and newness and abundance. And, and just she has unlimited capabilities. Nothing is impossible for the Empress. She is the representation of abundance. But in her shadow side, this is someone who really secretly in the depths of her soul has a core belief that there isn't enough, that there is a lack and that, you know, um, you cannot create more and that once this is gone, it's over. And with the four of coins, this is that energy of lack of I have to hold on to these few things that I have. I have to guard them with my life. I can't open up to receive anything new because I'd have to let go of what I have to open up to receive something new. I just have to keep hold I have to keep status quo. I've got to keep things just the way they are. I don't want them to get worse. You know, I don't I don't want to lose what I have, this little paltry bit that I have. And if I give it to someone else, or if I open up, or if I let it go for one second, or I take my eye off it for one second, it's going to be gone, and I will be without, and I won't be able to create more, and I won't be able to get more. And so we have this Eight of Cups. The energy of walking away. Wow, so if you have been in separation, it feels very much like, yeah, wow, Jesus. <gasps> I was beginning to be like, man, this is heavy. Is it, you know, man, this is like, like, Lord, you know, I mean, I do think this is reality. And I do feel like there are a lot of people walking around this earth in this mindset. But there, I am an eternal optimist. Just that's the core of my nature. I am a Libra in almost, I have, I think I have five or six placements in Libra. <laughs> and it's including my sun, my rising, and my Venus. And I think Libras are an optimistic group, well, especially Libra females. But we are the relationship house. You know, that is the most important thing in the world to us. And balancing those things out. And this reading was actually going to a place where it was feeling really imbalanced and I actually felt like tears pricking at my eyes of just how sad this story is. Uh, it, it's like when you're watching a movie and you just want people to get out of their own way and get together and love and just keep loving and they just keep fighting instead and they just keep touching each other's trigger points and and you know and it's like no 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 you're so close you're so close. Um, that's how this reading was really feeling. And then I saw the hermit and the hermit is such a positive energy in a space like this. Um, and especially because it reminded me of the two nines that we started off with. And it reminded me that this is the closing of a cycle. This is the ending of a period of time. Um, and then the nine of cups came and I literally had almost just said to you with the eight of cups, it's like, I've given up hope. I'm, I'm, I, I see that, you know, I've done everything that I can and now I'm leaving this situation. Um, and the, the eight of cups is the segue. It is the lead in to the nine of cups. What are we leaving the eight of cups for? We're leaving the eight of cups to experience the nine of cups because the eight of cups can never be the nine of cups. It can ever make us feel emotionally fulfilled on our own. It's something that we've given a lot to with those eight cups and it has provided some level of satisfaction, but it just couldn't get there. So this is something that I have to go on my own, Hermit Nine of Cups, to find for myself. And I have to do that for myself first before I can come into a relationship and expect to really experience the Ten of Cups, the emotional contentment of two people together. And with the eight of freaking pentacles on the bottom of the deck, it's like you're almost kidding me right here, spirit. Because the eight of pentacles is the energy of self-mastery. It's doing, you know, 
taking our focus. It's not maybe meditating for 12 hours a day. Remember how we started this reading, but it is saying, okay, you know what? It's time for me to prioritize myself and working on myself and changing the things that I want to change within myself so that the things that are outside myself that I'm coming into unity and harmony with are aligning with an emotional with emotional fulfillment not the five of pentacles scarcity mindset stuff Whew. so you've got the hermit on the empress and you've got the nine of cups on the eight of cups right the hermit on the empress is let me evaluate let me look at this energy let me look at why Somewhere within me, I am not aligned with the limitless potential of the universe. God forbid I bring up the same example I did the other day. <laughs> um, literally was not making any kind of political statement, people. Was just using it as an example. And wow. Um, I just, whoa. Um, <sighs> anyway... Um, I don't know. I, that's the only example I can think of also because it's so perfect. But there are times in life where you're looking around and you're going, man, um, I don't see anybody else that's been able to do this from, you know, there's almost this kind of like reality that's been beat into us, but it's really not reality. It's someone else's perspective or it is a generalized belief system that's been sort of pounded into us. In order for you to have this, you have to have that. Like, you know, um, in order for you to, you know, to really succeed in life, it, you know, you have to get a college degree. Well, that's just not true anymore. You can start your own business and you can, you know, there are tons of examples. Steve Jobs was a college dropout, you know. Um, so there's always someone that has to break the mold. There's always someone that has to do what it has to be the first person to do the thing. And, you know, it may be a rare occasion when, you know, someone grows up or experiences suffering in their life. My dogs are playing. I'm very sorry. I'll close my door. <laughs> I swear I'm running a dog summer camp. Um, but it, it always comes to this place where, you know, you are able to shift your own, your own core space on that scale, that spectrum of the empress and on that spectrum of the emperor, just by virtue of believing that it's possible. That's all it takes is for you instead of going, I want to be a millionaire, but I don't have any seed money to start my own business. I don't have a college degree. I don't have any particular skill. I don't have this. I don't have that. You know, if that's the narrative that you're telling yourself or if that's what you're looking at or if you're calling that being practical or being realistic, let me tell you, Steve Jobs was not practical. He was not realistic. Um, Walt Disney, like, literally had people tell him to his face he couldn't that nobody cared about a mouse and that nobody was going to look at that cartoon. And, you know, Disney World, whenever they, um, over the years, whenever they've been doing construction, they put up Disney quotes on these big boards to hide the ugliness of the construction. And, like, some of the, I would always read them. And um, it's like, if you can dream it, you can do it. You know, it was kind of his mantra. And he dreamed it and he did it. You just can't let people stop you. And so if what you want to do is heal and you want to shift on the spectrum of the Empress or the Emperor and you want to step into your own divinity and you want to therefore like help the people around you because you are always an example to the people around you, um, also shift into higher levels of consciousness or in into you know more of a flow of abundance and the belief that it is possible for everyone because it is all you have to do is really believe it um and envision it and do it right um 
we figure that out in the energy of the hermit. We figure that on our out on our own by really looking at and investigating what it is that star in the lantern and what it is we have within us to bring that about. And you know, the hermit is a spiritual seeker. And there are so many things that I talk about every day that are out there on YouTube for free that can definitely help take you in the direction of your dreams. And, you know, it, it's just a matter of believing that it's possible for you to move on that scale. And for some of you, this may be even talking about attachment styles, right? If we're in a scarcity mindset, we're probably an avoidant or an anxious attachment style or, you know, one of the variations of those. We're not secure. They have proven so many times that you can move your attachment style from one of, that's not set in stone. That's definitely something fluid. It's definitely something you can change. It's definitely something that you can move towards security in. Um, I say that because I kept getting this energy of resource protection over that heart shocker and that heart fog card. And that resource protection feels a lot like an avoidant attachment style or an anxious attachment style. So break the mold, break the chain, break the, you know, break your ancestral DNA, go do it, go do the thing, you know, change it up for yourself, offer yourself a different experience than what was, you know, just automatically presented to you in this life. With the nine of cups, look at the freedom and look at the transformation of the butterflies in that card. Free yourself from those lower vibrational energies and anything that would be holding you towards the shadow side of the Empress or the Emperor energy. You with you. And that's the Eight of Pentacles doing the work. All right, guys, I am going to dive in with these messages. If you're dealing with the water sign, I am recovering. Wonderful. I want to start over. I can't do this. There may be some back and forth. And that's the other thing is a lot of times we'll start on a journey of healing and we'll be plugging along and we'll be like, man, this is working. Man, I feel better. And then it's like, okay, I think I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed. I think I may have put too much in my head. Um, or we have an experience and it triggers us and it sets us back and we may respond or react in a way that is more representational of where we come came from rather than where we are now. We have to show ourselves so much grace. We have to say, you know what? Still in all, you are making progress and the progress is the only thing that matters. Let's keep going. Let's, let's keep doing this. You know, you have to be consistent and you can't ever give up, you know? You just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. You have abundance. You've done the work. Abundance flows to you now. All right, if you're dealing with a fire sign, I have trouble with intimacy, strictly sexual. This connection is passionate but not enduring. I think that that is how this person has involve themselves in relationships in the past. I feel though the energy of something that's a lot more intense than that. Um, I don't know what to do. I can be myself with you. You're dealing with an earth sign. Sorry. I miss being with you. I can't be with you. Healing, old wounds and childhood issues need your visiting, self-care, clear your energy field and focus on yourself before acting. Here and now, your true love is already a part of your life. And if you're dealing with an air sign, rejection, this rejection is actually divine protection. I have too much to lose. Stability, this relationship can stand the test of time and I wish we could go back. All right, until next time, guys, I send you off with all my very best. And please, again, <laughs> I am in no way guilt tripping you, just to be clear. Um, I'm talking about energetic exchange. What I have just given you is everything that I have to offer. And I would really appreciate it if you would reciprocate by hitting the subscribe button, the like button, leaving a comment, or sharing the video. Have a really wonderful day. Until next time, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always.